Wait one minute. Okay, did everyone get stickers? There's more after. <laughs> if you ask a question of us in the hallway after, we'll give you a maple candy. We're from Canada. That's the accents that you're going to hear. And so we brought a little bit of Canada with us to give away, but you have to ask a question and talk to us. I know it's scary, but we're actually really nice. Yeah. Okay, he's pressuring us to start, so let's start. Let's start. Okay. okay. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We're incredibly excited to present our talk, DevSecOps, with our project, OWASP DevSlob. That's a mouthful for me. Okay. This is not moving. Yep, that's okay. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about DevOps. We're super excited about DevOps. DevOps is changing the way we deliver system, we operate system, uh, the way we design system. And I think security people everywhere are having a case of FOMO, a fear of missing out, right? Uh, we've been telling everybody for years, for decades to, to shift left, to include us in the party, to include us in the life cycle, but it, you know, we keep repeating it, but it doesn't really happen. But then, dev and ops are suddenly, you know, breaking down silos, working together, uh, spinning up and running systems faster and cheaper. And as security professionals who care about security, we want to be included. We don't want to be left out. So here comes DevSecOps. So we're a bit desperate. We don't care how we're called. DevSecOps, Sec DevOps, securing DevOps, all of it doesn't matter. We just want to be invited. Include us, please. But it's hard, right? Um, so we're also going to talk about uh, our show, our, our project, DevSlop. So DevSlop is our gym. It's our, our jungle gym where we do AppSec, where we experiment, where we're allowed to make mistakes so we don't do them at work. Um, <laughs> exactly. Awesome. And um, so basically we build, we experiment, we destroy, and then um, we learn how we can keep up with DevOps. Okay. So. Uh, DevSlop has many modules. The module we'll focus on today is Patty. Patty is the name of our pipeline, the pipeline that uh, Tanya created. Okay, so if you've been to a security, securing DevOps uh, talk, obviously you've seen this slide before, it's been used. So it's exactly where we don't want to be. We don't want to be security uh, picking up, you know, rainbow DevOps poo, right? <laughs> We want, to be, we want to enable DevOps. How do we do that? Well, we teach them. We teach them about threats. We, we do threat modeling. We teach them about vulnerabilities, about mitigation mainly, right? And uh, we also give them the tools to do it right. We give them tools that work with the tools that they're currently using, not tools that will break anything that are not easy to use. We make sure that they can succeed. Uh, so, as you can see, there's still rainbow DevOps poo, but it's, you know, healthy, secure poo. <laughs> Let's move on and uh, introduce ourselves. Shalom. Hi, I'm Tanya Jacob. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is me. I like rock music. And on the internet, I'm called She Hacks Purple. And I work at Microsoft as a cloud advocate. I'm totally, completely obsessed with OWASP. It's basically all I talk about. And I'm one of the founders and chapter leaders for WOSEC, Women of Security. And... Okay, well, this is me. I'm Nancy Gershi. The accent, accent you hear is French-Canadian from Montreal. I'm um, on Twitter, Nancy G Tweets. That's a mouthful. And a funny thing about me, sometimes, a few times a month, actually, I get stopped on the street and people either, like, stare and ask me, do you know who you look like? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say Beyonce, but no, it's Whoopi. So no, no, I'm not Whoopi Goldberg. I'm not, no relationship with her at all. But, you know, I don't even see the resemblance, but, you know, it's been happening for the last 20 years, so there must be some truth to it. <laughs> what I am, though, is a senior cybersecurity analyst, and uh, so I really know how to work Excel. That's a skill, I swear. And I work for this guy, so I work for the Government of Canada. And in my spare time, I just started something called Secure That Cert. So we help security professional. We organize study groups for security professional in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, uh, to help them get their security, uh, cybersecurity certification. So that's local to where I'm at. 
So who here realizes that they are at an OWASP event? Who here is part of OWASP and goes to OWASP? Okay, so all the people that don't know OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, is a giant, huge organization of hundreds of thousands of people that are loosely involved or sometimes just totally dedicate their career to it. We have chapters all around the world. We have projects. That's what we do. And then we have global events like this. And so thank you for coming to my obsession. <laughs> so what is AppSec? So we define AppSec as anything that you do that makes your code more secure. It can be super formalized activities, or it can just be, you know, like playing around and adding a new tool in your pipeline to make sure you have higher code quality and to see if there's security problems, right? So uh, I said that because no one else said it for me, so I could quote them. Um, other things, so what is DevSecOps, right? So it's AppSec in a DevOps environment, basically. My friend Imran said this. But basically, like, we wanted to know where we fit in, and that's part of why we started this project. So we wanted to learn more, but not necessarily make mistakes at work. Instead, we make them live on the internet for everyone to watch. <laughs> um, so another thing people say to me is, you shouldn't say DevSecOps, you should say DevOps. Everyone says this, because DevOps is supposed to include security. But unfortunately, I continue to see DevOps producing insecure apps. Not all of the DevOps, but some of it. And until we all do it, I'm going to keep saying DevSecOps, and I promise I'll stop the moment that all of you just only produce secure code. Cool? OK. <laughs> Good. It's a deal. So. OK, so I previously mentioned our project, but I just want to say a bit more about it. Uh, basically, it's a project that was started by two friends, Tanya Jenka and Nico Becker. Uh, so basically, they started it to learn more and learn how to weave security through DevOps. Uh, so we have this beautiful website with the Azure template, default template, uh, at devslop.co, um, where you can learn about our modules. We have three modules. So I already mentioned the pa PADI, the pipeline, the DevSecOps pipeline. We also have Pixie, the cute web app API service that's vulnerable, and, and that's led by Nico Becker. And then the Pixie CRS that's led by Francisca Boiler. So we also have a show. So you can see the short link that will lead you to our YouTube channel. We normally do it live, most of the time do it live on Twitch or Mixer, where we, yes, do mistakes, but then take the good part and put it on, eventually, <laughs> on YouTube. Um, and so that's where yeah. we, we interview. Share. Yeah, we share our lessons. Yeah, we share our lessons with our art audience, and then we interview a lot of projects, uh, project leaders. Uh, they teach us about their project and about different topics. You know, hi, Dominique. <laughs> So first it was just Nicole and me. And then Nicole and me invited Francisca Bueller. And then we invited Abel Wang, and then Nancy, and then a whole bunch of other people just kept joining. So we have tons and tons of people that contribute to our project. It's been amazingly fun and joyous and educational. And OWASP has lots of projects, and you can join one really easily, or you can start your own. And um, we're having a great time, and you might too. We can't speak highly enough of the OWASP organization. And so when you see Nancy and I up here looking awesome, there's actually lots of other people behind us helping us make look, look awesome, and I just wanted to give credit to all the awesome humans involved. And this is our awesome, awesome um, logo created by Nicole. And if you want, after, we have stickers. Okay, so. Okay, so if by now you don't know, how do we like to learn how to do DevSecOps? Well, it's by doing it. Oops, sorry, I sorry. did that. <laughs> uh, so that's what we'll do. Tanya will go through a bunch of, uh, a bunch of demos. And um, yeah, let's do it. Let's get technical. Yeah, let's get technical. <laughs> so there's seven steps right now in the pipeline. So we'll go through them quickly and then go one by one a bit deeper. <laughs> so we start by verifying our third-party components. Then we use uh, static security testing, then dynamic security testing, then we test our infrastructure. We have a step called security hygiene for our HTTPS uh, TLS uh, configuration. And then we're using a secret store, and finally scanning our code for credentials and secrets. So Patty is an Azure DevOps pipeline, right? But you can use the pipeline you want. We always will have a list of other tools, similar tools that you can use to create your own pipeline. So Jenkins, Circle CI, GitLab, is all so things that you can use, tools that you can use. Okay, let's look at each part, each step. First step, verifying third-party components. So in our pipeline and Patty, we want to make sure we're using uh, 
open source products. We want to make sure that our software supply chain is secure. So by using free stuff, uh, yes, um, yes, we, uh, we save money and we use their functionality, but we also inherit their security vulnerabilities. And we want to make sure that the code that we inherit you know, doesn't create problems for us. So that's why we, we go through it and we, we can build, uh, break the build if ever we find something that's really dangerous. As you may know, verifying third-party components is number nine on the OWASP's uh, top 10. So take a look, there's a good description of the vulnerability and, and what to do about it. So the tool that we use on our pipeline for verifying third-party is White Source Bolt. I think they're out here today. Um, but there is a bunch, again, of other tools that do the same thing, that do similar things. Uh, you might be familiar with the OWASP dependency check and other tools that you can see here. And uh, for each of our demos, we'll have a short link available, and that's where we'll have a, a longer video of the demo of what Tanya is doing right here, but with sound and special effects and the great stuff. <laughs> so here's the first one. Go ahead. So here's our demo. So this is what our pipeline looks like. So we edit our pipeline, and we're going to add white source bolt. So we've added it as a task, but we're going to show you how to look it up. So you just click the plus sign, and then you look up white source, and then there it is. You click it, you click add. It's free. So that's a huge plus, because we have no money, because we're an open source project. So the set, it's so easy to set it up. Like the settings are just, basically, we just chose the default settings. So we told it, you know, look at our devslop directory, and then um, we didn't do any advanced settings, and it still works great. Um, so we enabled control options, which means it does have the power to break our build, which is good. It took us a long time to pass this. We have many episodes about us fixing all the vulnerabilities that this fine tool has found. And then, yeah, basically, we, we give it zero time limit, so we just let it run indefinitely. It does the scan during your um, actual build, but then after, it creates the report out of band, so it doesn't slow things down. So we run it. We're going to click the little button there. Um, this is going to show us like exactly what it looks like when it's running. And we're going to make this really quick. We've like cut along really quickly, because if we ran through all of this, we'd be here all day. And we were asked to pre-record them. I like to do this live, because I'm a masochist. But anyway, it looks like this. <laughs> and then you'll see a report, and it will tell you every single thing that it found. It's really super helpful. But then it has a beautiful report that you're going to see just after this. But basically, it tells you every single step. If it gets stuck partway through, it will show you exactly where. You can export this if you want to. Mostly, like, I just go to the bottom, did I pass? <laughs> so you can see here it's all green, so we passed. But more importantly, there's our report. See the beautiful green? Yes! I believe we high five in this video. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we're really excited once we got that green, because we were red for a long time, if you ever watch our show. But yeah, up next. Up next, Thank we have, you. oh, it's me. Up next, we have static code analysis. So some people say that there's no time for this in a pipeline, and I know what you mean. <laughs> um, if you want to do really in-depth parsing of a very large app, it might not be realistic to do in your pipeline, but we have a baby app, and we're also trying to do it, again, some of it out of band. So we are using Sonar Cloud, which is built by Sonar Cube, because it's free. Um, <laughs> and like I mentioned before, um, we, don't, like, we don't have a huge budget. Security tools can be quite expensive, right? And so there's similar tools, check marks, who I believe are here. There's four to five fine bugs. All sorts of amazing tools that can do this for you. Some of them are free, some of them aren't. Some of them are better than others. We chose this one. And here is our demo. So I'm going to start our demo. So I, again, was not going to make you watch the entire thing run. But here's kind of what it looks like as it's running in the build. And after, in the summary, we see that we got a nice big green, so we passed. So it takes like a while to run, like it takes five, six minutes, and I don't want to torture you. But anyway, so when you click the button, it will show you in the cloud the, the actual report. So you can see it thinks we have 86 bugs. That can't be true. <laughs> um, and then we have zero vulnerabilities, but we have 250, uh, 285 hotspots to go check for security. So this is how you set it up. So you have to set up three parts. So you have to do prepare analysis, run code analysis, and then publish the quality gate result like out to the cloud if you want to see it. So you look up Sonar Cloud to install it. Um, and again, we have a more in-depth uh, version of this on our site with sound. Um, and these are the settings we chose. It was not very difficult to install this tool. There are a lot of tools where they were quite difficult. You will not see them in our demos because we just couldn't do it. So they've actually gone so far as to create their own service connection. So 
you can see um, if you go, so I have one for Sneak and GitHub and then Sonar Cloud. So it's already set up for you. So it has this connection out, the secure connection out to, from Azure DevOps from your cloud to uh, the website to actually create it for you, which is really cool. So we let it continue to run the task even if other things fail, because I want the report. I want to know what's wrong no matter what. And then that's it. And then we run it, and then we get that report. And that is the end of this demo. And then there's our report again, and that's it. I was very pleased when we didn't find any security vulnerabilities, because whenever we put in a new tool, usually it tells us how crappy we are, because <laughs> each tool looks for different things. Anyway, thank you. OK, so the third step for Patty's the pipeline. Oh, <laughs> we bored him. Um, is black box, uh, black, black box testing. So that's useful for testing web apps or mobile apps, but it doesn't always play nice with uh, CI CD pipeline, you must know. <laughs> so the tool that we used is uh, the OWASP Zap, obviously. Um, so that we use to scan our web, uh, our web page and find our vulnerabilities. And uh, keep in mind that DAST is quite slow. So you might want to run that, uh, run that in parallel or out of band. Again, other tools, Burp Suite, you're familiar with, with AppScan, I think they're here as well today, and a bunch of other tools that can do similar things. Again, a link to the longer video with special effects and Simon. Yeah, and Simon's in it. Simon, the founder of Zap, is in the video. Oh, awesome. He's awesome. He is, yeah. Um, okay, so let's do a demo. All right, play? Okay, great. So Zap's more complex than some of the other ones to suggest. So it does have its own um, marketplace item like to plug into Azure. However, you have to create your own virtual machine and install it there. And then install agents on your virtual machine from Azure DevOps to run it. You have to create an API key. We are gonna, we're not running it in headless mode because then that makes a silly demo because you can't see anything. So we're gonna show you the GUI. Um, yes, I know you can see my API key, we changed it. Also, we have several other mitigations to make sure you can't get to it, but we know, we know. Um, so we're going to execute the spider. We're going to do it recursively. Generally, you would just do spidering and passive scanning in your pipeline because it would take too long to do dynamic application security testing, like full out active scans. But we're going to do it because we're an open source project and we're less about getting things out in eight minutes as opposed to like us learning about security. We're going to do it recursively and we're going to make sure, most of all, that we only <coughs> test things that are in scope. For obvious reasons, if my cloud provider has a thing going out and attacking random links on a site, we are gonna be unpopular in an amazing way. <laughs> so yeah, so definitely the in scope only button, you wanna check that. Okay, so now I think we're gonna go to the next part. Okay, so now let's run it. So we're gonna create a release and it's gonna run up. So we actually started our virtual machine earlier with Zap to make sure it was ready. We could automate it with a serverless app to actually start the VM, but I haven't done that yet. That will be another lesson. So let's look at our release. Okay, we're gonna click on the button. We have done 115 releases of our app. It's nice. Okay, so again, we're gonna fast forward through a lot of the things you don't need to see every single step. Let's just get to the good stuff. So you can see here, you know, it's the scan process. It's slow. It actually takes like six to eight minutes to run on our very simple app. But instead, we're going to show you the virtual machine running, which looks way cooler. Who here has used Zap before? Yeah? Okay, awesome. Nice. It's free. It's a really high quality scanner and it's free. It's a really good deal. Um, so it runs through. It has lots of alerts. We are using a custom context for Zap, specifically because we found false positives. So it kept thinking it found SQL injection and we we're like, no, uh, no. Um, <laughs> so we have a whole episode no. about us like verifying that it's definitely not SQL injection, then another one about us and our, our custom context and like how we can make sure that we tune out false positives because that's extremely important for your pipeline. And then, yeah, basically we create a report by going to the report menu and clicking report. And then you type it all in and then you press your start button and then it's gonna create a report for you. And as you can see, we have zero high, zero medium, and four low. Yes, that's the high five, there we go. Um, <laughs> and basically, we've set our pipeline to crash if we have any highs, and if we have one or more mediums, or 10 or more lows, because we're very lenient with ourselves. But anyway, this is, this is OWASP's app. All right, so now let's talk about infrastructure. So if you write a really awesome, awesome app that's super secure, and then it sits on a platform that's wildly insecure, you have serious problems. <laughs> that's not gonna be good for you. I know that AppSec is the title of this conference, but we would not be doing you justice if we didn't talk about making sure that your platform's secure. 
So for this one, we are going to use um, Secure DevOps Kit for Azure. And it's native to Azure, so installing it is a cinch. That's why we chose it, and it's free. And I like free. So other awesome tools are Nessus, Nexpose, and Map. They all start with N for networking. And again, of course, we made a video about it, right? Um, this was, this was an easy one to do. Some of these ones were really hard. We have a bunch that, we actually were trying to install four more this week because I'm obsessive and we couldn't get them going. So this was an easy one. So let's play our demo. So it looks like that, AZSK underscore SVTS. It's a little bit, you have to know what it's called. Just look out for security kit and you'll find it. Um, so always pick the newest task version. We don't change the display name. So you have to pick your subscription right, which is mine. We chose a resource group to scan, so we chose the resource group called DevSlot Patty, so everything that's went in our network for that. And then it makes you copy your subscription ID again. I don't know why. I don't know why I asked twice. We did not enable OMS logging. We're not there yet. We didn't do aggregate control. For some reason, there's a checkbox that says do not update. Why would you ever check that? Of course you want to update. Of course you want the newest skin. So don't ever, don't ever click that. Um, and then we turned on, um, you know, enable control options. So we want to make sure it can actually um, end our build if, or break our build if we need to. <laughs> so let's kick off a release and see it go. So we go and we create a release here. And we're going to just do the newest drop. We tend to, like, release things all the time. We're scanning it in dev. Scan it in anything up to prod. Don't scan it in prod because you're already in trouble if you're figuring out you have infrastructure problems there. So we do the newest drop, we press the button, and then we're going to go see it running, because I like to see it run. Um, and again, we're going to make it go faster than it really goes, because this is a live demo, and all of you have things to do. <laughs> OK, so um, it installs and updates itself every single time, unless you click that awful checkbox that I don't know why that's there. And then this is the result. So it goes line by line every single thing. As you can see, it found tons of stuff. I'm sorry it's dark, but it found 20. Uh, well, it found, yeah, we failed 15 uh, mediums, 10 highs, zero lows. It's telling us to manually go verify 29 mediums and 16 highs, because it's not sure, right? So it creates this little report for you and tells you what's up. It's very, very helpful. Um, I had no idea that I was doing so many things wrong. <laughs> um, and I work there, so I'm really supposed to know. <laughs> so it's very thorough. It's very, very slick. It's very strict. So the first time you turn this on, do not make it break the build, because you'll just break the build for three weeks and no one will like you. You definitely want to just let it go through at first. And so that is the security kit for Azure DevOps. OK, so step five for, uh, for Patty the Pipeline is we called it security hygiene. So basically, it's verifying your SSL TLS configuration, making sure that we're not using ciphers that are insecure. We know that uh, SSL version 2, version 3, uh, TLS prior to 1.3, 1.2, we don't consider that secure. We want to check that, check our security header. And the tool that we're using for that is SSL Lab by Qualys. There are a few other tools that you could use, Arduinize.io, Qualys has a bigger tool for that, security, securityheaders.com as well. So here's the link for the longer version of, of the course, video again. Yeah, of course we have a video. And this is free. You all should install it right now. <laughs> okay, so here's the demo. Really, it's free and it's so easy. Like, everyone should just use it if you're, if you're using this tool. So again, we click the plus and then you look up SSL Labs and you will find it and you click the install button. We've already installed it. Um, and then you add the task to your uh, pipeline. So I think we do this in QA. So again, we're, you know, we use the newest version of the task. We just leave the display name as it is. We don't care. The important part is, is that you want to give it yeah, the URL where it's going to scan. So again, probably not prod, probably QA or dev. We want to execute a fresh scan. And we are going to publish our results. Do you see? Um, oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh, I'm so sorry. Crap, I have to start that again. Uh, sorry about that. I would fast forward through it. Um, but basically, you don't want to publish your results publicly if you work for a company. We are publishing our results because we don't care, because we're an open source project. We hang our dirty laundry out to dry all the time, <laughs> right? That's what we do, and that's OK. But you do not want to check that box. So now the correct button, don't click this box. That's really important. And yeah, sorry to make you watch this again. I know we're short on time. But you send it to wherever you want to send it to, whichever server. You execute the fresh scan. You do not, again, repeat, do not publish your results unless you want to 
on purpose. Um, we, a cool new thing here, so we set it at A, so we have to get an A minus to pass, otherwise it breaks the build. There's lots of choices, you get a grade. The default, the default.net thing gets you an A minus. In order to get an A plus, you have to do more work, which we did, you'll see. So we've enabled certificate um, expiration alerts, so it's gonna give us an alert 30 days before our, any certificates expire. This is awesome, because I don't know if you know, but like, I don't just like check that every day. I have other things to do. And so I think it's really great that it tells us. Um, so again, we have 30 days and we break the build if, uh, if it doesn't, if we're past that. Okay, so let's run it. So we're gonna create a release. We're gonna do it in QA. So we're just gonna redeploy our release in QA rather than doing a new one. And yes, I know it was broken before. I break it a lot. <laughs> um, so an amazing developer comment, deploy, that's super helpful. And then we're gonna run it. And basically, um, it runs really quickly. It doesn't take very long because it just does a handshake. I don't know if any of you know how SSL labs work, but it does like the three part handshake and then it goes to a certain point and then it stops before it does a full connection and then it just tells you what the handshake looks like. And you can see here, we got an A plus, that's awesome. It doesn't give you that much results there, so you can go to the Qualys website and put your, your app uh, address in there instead and then you get like this full detailed many page report which is more helpful. Um, but in Azure DevOps, it's kind of like pass or fail. Um, and we passed, excellent. Uh, so the next thing is using a secret store. Mm -hmm. This one's me, right? Yeah. All right, so this is Francisca and I uh, at the Open Security Summit. Who here has been to one of the OWASP summits before? Yeah, they're really great. That's where I met Tash. She's amazing. She's speaking later. You should go to her talk. Um, but yeah, it's a great time if you want to work on something in depth. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we used Azure Key Vault because we're in Azure. It makes sense to use the cloud native tool. There's tons of other super cool tools like Truffle Hog, Taurus, Git Secrets, et cetera, et cetera. So all of the cloud providers have their own secret store and you should use it. You should use the one that comes with your thing. And if it doesn't come with the thing, use one of the other ones. Keep your secrets in a secret store. Otherwise, they're not a secret. They're just gossip, okay? <laughs> awesome, so we have a video down there as usual. And so let's do a demo. So this is the most complex of all the demos. This took hours and hours. So this is a very short version. So this is what my Azure um, portal looks like. And in there we have a database. And Abel is our bad dev. So he on purpose does bad things for me to fix. So we have a database. And where did he save our connection string? In our code, obviously. So yeah, and I published it. I'm gonna tell you about that in the next one. And so, um, we reset our password, we save it to one password to our secret, um, to our password manager, because I need to make sure I have a copy. Um, and then we followed this giant document. So Microsoft has a thing called Microsoft Docs. And uh, for this one, I was living there because I had no idea how to do this. So I had to create a service principle, I had to create Azure AD, I had to do five million steps in order to just start setting up Azure Key Vault. I was really surprised by how much work it was. So then this is me creating the key vault. You have to buy it, it's not free. This is the only costly tool that we're showing you. Um, so there it is, I named it DevSlop Key Vault, of course. And then what do you wanna do? You wanna put your secrets in it, right? So we're gonna put our secrets in. Oh yeah, we made an access policy. Never have the developer put their credentials into something. You wanna have the app talk to the database or talk to your secret store, right? So we had to make an access policy where we actually allowed the app to talk to, so we made a service principle. So it's like an identity, like Tanya has an identity within AD, except for it's an application that has an identity. So our service principle, um, we also had to ha add like NuGet packages, we had to add like five million things to make this work. But then once it works, it works forever. You can even make it rotate your keys now, which is pretty cool. Um, so we had to change a bunch of code, and then we go here, you can see now we're call calling Azure Key Vault instead of putting our code in there, I mean our secrets in there, and then there's our secret in Azure Key Vault, and that is a long one. And we, you can put cer certificates, secrets, anything else you want in, and you see there's me the user, but then there's Patty, <coughs> DevSlop, actually the application accessing the secret store. And then that's it. So the last one that we're going to show you is scanning for secrets. So uh, that episode came about because of this episode. So on purpose, I checked in um, a, a secret into GitHub and everyone lost their minds. <laughs> um, so uh, at Microsoft, we use CredScan. Um, so we added that to our pipeline. But as an employee, me trying to check it in, Azure DevOps was like, nope, 
nope. And I was like pressing like, it's okay, it's okay. It's like, nope. I'm like, yes, yes. So I force it and I go past it. And then um, I got in trouble because it told on me to my manager. And my manager's like, what are you doing, Jacob? And I was like, no, 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 this is for a lesson. That's like a fake username and password to our database for like our fake test area. It's a proof of concept. And he's like, oh, that's hilarious. I got this alert and I was freaking out. And then it told us to the instant response team. <laughs> and they were very upset. <laughs> um, so anyway, the point is, is it will tell on you in a good way. Um, so there's lots and lots of different tools that do this that are awesome. My favorite one on this list is Giddy Leaks because it sounds like WikiLeaks. I was like, yes, that's awesome. So there's all sorts of tools. If you want to use more than one, that's even better. Um, having it like the first moment, the first moment it gets into GitHub, there are so many automatic scans kicked off of people trying to see if there's secrets in there. You cannot get it that far. You need to check in your pipeline. Absolutely, at least one check. Okay. Oh, and of course, um, so we didn't make a video for this one. Like we did, but I forgot to plug in the Sorry. microphone. So there was no sound. So we'll make another one later. So instead you get documentation. Yay, documentation. <laughs> okay, all right, let's go. So let's do a demo. So this one was so easy. It was really, really easy. <clears throat> um, so it also runs really quickly. So we're gonna hit, like, kick off a build. Oh, no, we're not. Okay, so that's what it looks like there. You just add a task. You wanna add a task in the release somewhere. Oh no, this is in the build. Yeah, okay, wherever you want, basically. Um, but this is in the build, and we just did all the default settings again, right? Run a code scan, or cred scan, just run it. Like regular um, build sources directory. We mostly just did defaults, because it's, it knows what it is, right? So our app is an ASP, or, or no, is a .NET core app, but it was upgraded from an ASP.NET app. So it's like a little weird with the project files and stuff, so sometimes scanners have trouble seeing us. It seemed to be like, supposed to be saying something here that's extra, but I don't know what. I look very happy in this video with no sound. Um, but anyway, so then we're gonna run a build. I think we're gonna run a build. Oh, that's it, so it ran. <laughs> Sorry about that. I guess like at the beginning it passed. Um, but basically, like it takes like oh, just seconds to run it. It's very, very, very fast because it's really obvious what secrets look like. And I really strongly encourage everyone to use something to scan for secrets and passwords and credentials and anything like that in your code. All right. Okay. Now so we're, sorry. No, that's it. That's it. Seth. So those are the seven steps to the pipeline. Let's review what we did. We went through, we verified our third party components. We use what white source bolt for that. And then we did static application security testing when you used a sonar cloud. And then we did some dynamic security testing and we use OWASP Zap for that. For infrastructure, we used Azure DevOps uh, Security Kit. And again, security hygiene uh, or SSL TLS configuration, we use SSL Labs for Qualys. Uh, for our secret store, we used Azure DevOps. And to scan for credentials, we used Cred Scan. Um, with that, I want to talk about a few more things that you can do as part of DevSecOps. There's many ideas. This is like, just a list of things we're doing currently. Um, we're interested in doing negative unit tests, so taking your unit tests that you have and then weaponizing them so that you have regressive security testing. We're interested in IAST, interactive security, uh, application security testing, which is, um, it's more at the app level and it does execution. Um, we're interested in web app firewalls or WAF. <coughs> of course, OWASP makes one. It's called Mod Security and it has the core rule set which are the signatures for it, which is another OAS project with Francisca Bueller. Um, we have RASP, we're very interested in that, so that's real-time application security protection. A lot of people compare it to WAF, but it, you know, while a WAF will be like a shield that's at an outer level, like on a web balancer, generally your RASP is directly on your app server and it's even a stub within your application sometimes. And, oh, okay, and then linting. So linting is the grammar police. They're gonna, Basically, um, Sonar Cloud does a bit of linting, but the idea is, is that it makes sure that very strictly you're sticking to the exact way that your language should be used and that you're not going off on your own. Whenever we don't declare a type or something like that, we can fail into an unknown state, and unknown state is what hackers dream of. So linting is good. And we are going to give you some resources. So we are wrapping up the talk now. You should get your cameras out because this is gonna be a long-term relationship between us. <laughs> we are, so we have videos, we have blogs, we have stories, we have everything. And if you wanna know more about each of these things or all the other crazy things that we're doing with our project, we want you to know that 
by now, OWASP DevSlob has your back and that we have a bunch of resources for you. Uh, everything is on our website, devslob.co, and again, the short link to our YouTube channel where all our shows will be. We also have a bunch of things where you can follow us. The new thing is, uh, Tanya just published a blog, yeah, yeah. <laughs> our new dov.to blog uh, with one post, so exciting. Go check it out, <laughs> and the rest of it. Also, you should follow me. Um, my mom does, so what could, you know, obviously you should too, and my grandma. <laughs> um, so if you look up She Hacks Purple, I have a YouTube channel, a dev.to blog, a Medium blog, I do Twitter, and you can follow me um, on LinkedIn because I'm not allowed more connections. Yeah, I'm not very active, but I am Nancy G tweets on, on Twitter, and I will like everything, like if you follow me, <laughs> and I will retweet Tanya and DevSlop Show, so yes. that can be interesting. It is. <laughs> With that, we would like to thank you so much for your time and attention today. Thank you.